How did a small island nation come to dominate vast territories across the globe in the 19th century? The story of British imperialism is a saga of ambition, power, and far-reaching influence. In the 19th century, Britain's imperial reach spanned continents, setting the stage for a series of conflicts that would reshape global dynamics. One of the most significant of these conflicts was with China, a nation with its own rich history and vast resources. The clash of these two powers, culminating in the Opium Wars, exemplifies the lengths to which the British Empire would go to secure its economic interests and expand its influence. As we explore this epoch, we'll uncover the strategies employed by Britain to assert its dominance from diplomatic maneuvers to outright warfare. The Opium Wars in particular highlight the complex interplay of trade, diplomacy and military might. To understand this monumental influence, we delve into the Opium Wars, where Britain's strategies and might were vividly displayed. The first Opium War, ignited in 1839, marked the explosive start of conflict between Britain and China. At the heart of this confrontation was opium, a powerful and addictive narcotic. For Britain, opium was not merely a commodity, but a strategic tool to balance trade inequalities. Prior to the wars, China enjoyed a favorable balance of trade, largely due to the high demand in Britain for Chinese tea, silk and porcelain. However, Britain had little to offer in return that interested China, leading to a significant outflow of silver from Britain to China. In a bid to reverse this economic trend, British traders, backed tacitly by their government, began smuggling Indian-grown opium into China. This move was economically ingenious, but morally questionable. The influx of opium soon resulted in widespread addiction across China, severely impacting the social fabric and economic stability of the empire. The Chinese government, under the stewardship of the dauntless commissioner Lin Zexu, decided to clamp down on this drug epidemic. In 1839, Lin took drastic measures by confiscating and destroying over 20,000 chests of opium in Canton, a bold move that directly challenged British economic interests and sparked outrage in Britain. The response from Britain was swift and military in nature. Viewing Lin's actions as a violation of free trade principles and an affront to their national honor, the British government dispatched a formidable naval force to China this fleet, armed with the latest in naval technology, including steam-powered gunboats, represented a significant technological advantage over the Chinese traditional junks and fortifications. As the British forces arrived, their superior technology and tactical expertise were immediately brought to bear. Naval engagements along the Chinese coast highlighted the stark technological disparities between the two powers. The British easily penetrated the Chinese defenses, pushing further into the heart of the empire and bringing the Qing dynasty to the negotiating table under duress. With superior naval technology and strategic prowess, Britain quickly escalated the conflict, showcasing its military might. 1842 brought a close to the first chapter of this conflict with the Treaty of Nanking. In the wake of hostilities that had shaken the region, the Treaty of Nanking stood as a stark testament to British naval and diplomatic prowess. Sealed in late summer, this treaty ended the first opium war between the British Empire and Qing Dynasty China. Under the terms of this agreement, China was compelled to cede Hong Kong Island to Britain, forever altering the geopolitical landscape of East Asia. The treaty further stipulated the opening of five key ports to British traders, Canton, Amoy, Fuchao, Ningpo, and Shanghai. This was not merely a gesture of goodwill or a move towards open trade, but a calculated expansion of British economic influence. These ports, bustling with potential, became conduits for British commercial interests, ensuring a steady flow of trade goods, most notably opium, into the heart of China. Moreover, the Treaty of Nanking imposed a hefty indemnity on the Qing dynasty, a financial burden intended to compensate the British for the costs of their military campaign. 
This indemnity further weakened China's imperial treasury, already strained by internal pressures and corruption. The treaty also introduced the concept of extraterritoriality, granting British nationals in China immunity from Chinese law. This provision underscored the disparity in power, effectively placing British subjects above the jurisdiction of the land in which they resided. The treaty not only marked an uneasy pause in hostilities, but also a significant shift in regional power dynamics. Peace, however, was tenuous, and the winds of war blew yet again a decade later. In the aftermath of the Treaty of Nanking, a fragile calm settled over China and Britain. This period, marked by an uneasy peace, saw China grappling with internal pressures and the relentless economic demands of the Western powers. The British, though ostensibly satisfied with the concessions of the treaty, remained vigilant and eager to expand their trade privileges. During this time, the undercurrents of dissatisfaction and resentment simmered among the Chinese populace and officials alike. The Qing dynasty, weakened and humiliated, struggled to enforce the new terms, which only deepened the internal strife. Meanwhile, British merchants, emboldened by their previous victories, pushed further into the Chinese markets, often flouting the delicate terms of peace brokered earlier. The powder keg of tension finally exploded with the Arrow Incident in 1856. The Arrow, a Chinese-owned but British-registered ship, was seized by Chinese officials in Canton under the accusation of piracy. The British, citing violation of their flag, used this incident as a pretext to exert pressure on the Qing government, demanding even greater concessions. This incident rekindled the embers of war, leading to the outbreak of the Second Opium War. Britain, no longer acting alone in its imperial ambitions, was now joined by France. Together, they sought not just to address the immediate diplomatic insults, but to expand their influence and control over China. Britain, now joined by France, was set to consolidate its influence over China with renewed vigor. The escalation reached its zenith with the fall of Beijing in 1860. As the smoke of the Second Opium War curled into the sky, it signaled not just a battle, but a deep shift in the East-West dynamics. The conflict, fueled by trade disputes and territorial ambitions, led British and French forces to march towards the very heart of the Qing Empire. The path to Beijing was marked by significant battles, such as the capture of the Taku Forts, which guarded the river approach to the Imperial City. This victory was crucial. It opened the river route to Beijing, allowing the Allied Western forces to press forward. In August of 1860, with the fort secured, the march toward Beijing was relentless and by October, the city succumbed to foreign power. In the cool autumn of that year, under the looming walls of the captured city, the Treaty of Tianjin was renegotiated and expanded. Originally signed in 1858 to end hostilities, the terms were now enforced with the city under occupation. The treaty was a document of sweeping changes. It legalized the opium trade, a point of contention that had fueled the fires of war twice in less than two decades. Additionally, it expanded the rights of foreigners to travel and trade within China, and significantly, it ceded Kowloon to Britain, adding to the colonial enclave of Hong Kong. Moreover, the treaty opened 11 new ports to foreign trade, breaking the seal on China's historic isolation. These ports became conduits of influence, not just for goods, but for cultural and political ideas that would slowly transform Chinese society. The treaty also granted foreign envoys the right to reside in Beijing, ensuring a permanent foreign presence at the heart of the Qing administration. This clause symbolized a profound breach of the Celestial Empire's sovereignty, a concession that would have long-standing repercussions on Chinese national sentiment. With the Treaty of Tinsin, Britain not only solidified its foothold in China, but also set a precedent for other Western powers. This agreement didn't just reshape trade, it reshaped the geopolitical contours of East Asia, setting the stage for an era of intensified international interaction and influence.
The Opium Wars left an indelible mark on China and reshaped global trade and diplomacy. In the wake of these conflicts, China found itself navigating a tumultuous sea of social, economic and political upheavals. The treaties that concluded the Opium Wars not only ceded territory, but also compromised China's sovereignty, leading to a period known as the Century of Humiliation. This era was marked by internal strife and external pressures that profoundly altered the Chinese way of life. Economically, the aftermath saw a drastic shift. The opening of various treaty ports fostered trade but also facilitated the influx of foreign influences and economic dominance by Western powers. This economic transformation was a double-edged sword. While it brought modernization and development of infrastructure, it also led to economic exploitation and dependence on foreign goods and technology. Politically, the Qing Dynasty's authority was severely weakened. The inability to fend off Western powers diminished the imperial court's prestige, leading to growing dissatisfaction and the rise of revolutionary thoughts among the populace. This period set the stage for the eventual fall of the Qing Dynasty and the rise of republican ideas, which culminated in the 1911 revolution. On a broader scale, Britain's victory heralded the age of Western imperialism in Asia. It signaled to other European powers that vast regions were open for exploitation and control, leading to an era where Western powers carved out spheres of influence across the continent. This not only changed the geopolitical landscape of Asia, but also impacted global diplomacy, fostering a new set of international relations based on power dynamics and colonial dominance. The ripple effects of the Opium Wars were not confined to Asia. They echoed across continents, influencing the policies of other empires and shaping the doctrines of international law and colonial ethics. The conflicts highlighted the stark inequalities between the industrialized Western world and other regions, setting a precedent for future international interactions in the age of imperialism. These conflicts not only reshaped the East, but also echoed across continents, setting the stage for modern global dynamics.